This is June 22nd, 1961. Can you recall your earliest memories of race? You grab that bat and you do what's right. I don't think so. This is in your blood, all right? This is where you belong, boy. Montgomery's a pretty town. With a pretty ugly side to it. Get out of here! It's Jim Alexander with Real Talker right here. I'm talking with Barry Alexander. What's going on, Barry? Uh, just, <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff I want to cram into, so I guess I'm going to hit hard from the start <laughs> with questions. You know, initially on the surface, so you're a white guy from Britain, you know, and telling a story about the South and what happened in the 60s. And I know you, it, this has been an uh, autobiography written by Bob in, in itself, and obviously the story has been written there, but did you ever have any trepidations or kind of look at the optics from the outside when you kind of look at, oh, it's probably a black director or a black writer for this film. Um, did you ever think about kind of the optics of it when, uh, when people find out and, and see the film? Well, I was born in England, but I did grow up in the deep South. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I left England when I was two years old, you know, and grew up in places like Mississippi and Alabama and the northern part of Florida. And, and where my, you know, Montgomery is where my, my family still lives. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, no, I mean, this was, you know, even though I'm a, I am a British citizen, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, still, you know, I'm a white Southerner. I, I grew up like Bob did. I grew up deep in the white South. And, um, you know, went to high school in Montgomery, Alabama, where the story takes place. So I, I felt that I could really tell the story because I grew up with that. I grew up with all these voices. I grew up with these people, you know, and so it wasn't hard for me. It wasn't hard for me to find the voice and the sound. That, that makes complete sense in that case. You know, you've already have a lot of, a lot of stuff about you. You know I mean? That that's interesting uh, about your own backstory in a sense, but that that's pretty cool to, to find that out. You know, being an editor kind of first and foremost, that's what you kind of honed your craft in Absolutely. how, you know, in piecing movies together, how different was it to not only write the screenplay, but then direct, you know, you, you see usually what the director's final product is and you try to, piece it and make it into a movie but what was your kind of uh, seeing it on the other side in a sense uh what was that kind of feeling and going about it any sort of like editor's thought process throughout at times at times you know I did not want to I didn't want to write this film as anything but a writer and mm -hmm. I didn't want to direct this film as anything but a director but there was a times because we were we were dealing with a very limited budget and I wanted to make a film of real quality so there was times when we would have a day in which we were running out of time. And so now I'm dealing with a scene that I can't shoot in this amount of hours. I got to do something. And as an, then the editor would step onto the set and say, okay, you can get rid of this, this, and this. You can, you, you know, we, we're, we're not going to need that and that, you know, the editor being me because I edited the film. So mm -hmm. then I step back in as a director and say, okay, I just talked to my editor. This is the way we're going to do it. You know, so That's having it. decades of experience and working with one of the great filmmakers of all time, Spike Lee, you know, um, I, has, has taught me how to be flexible, has taught me how to think on my feet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because this movie in a lot of ways kind of parallels in a modern way, what's been going on with our society. How do you kind of view that from a filmmaking aspect and, and just the citizen of the world, how the story that, you know, that we're seeing in a movie and how it kind of translates or, or interwines with today's generation and what's going on with, with the protests throughout the past year or so, especially. Well, you know, I, I really did a movie that I wanted to be true, as true as I, I thought I could be you know, to 1961 and the civil rights movement, um, at least one sliver of, uh, of the story of the civil, civil rights movement, and it's a sliver, you know? And, and you know, that movement was, was driven by very, very young people. I mean, you think of even, even the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. You know, he, you know when he led, um, you know, the Montgomery bus boycott in 55 and 56, you know, he was 26 years old, 
you know? Um, you think of him as being a middle-aged man. He was young. John Lewis, when John Lewis, you know, helped found uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, he was 20, 21 years old. You know, Bob Zellner joined uh, the Civil Rights Movement at 22. Every one of them was so young. And I think that, that, that the movement today, I mean, obviously there's all kinds of people in the Black Lives Movement, uh, Black Lives Matter Movement, but so many people are, 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 are very young. And this is what happens over and over and over is that, is that so much of the energy for these movements come from very young people and very young people can be very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're out of time, but thanks so much for answering and the thoughtful answers, Barry. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. I like, I like your last name. <laughs> well, it's two first names. So there you go. And, and, and it kind of, uh, you know, correlates with yours. So it's always a good one. I, I, I didn't notice that. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Take care, Barry. Okay, bye. We hold the moral high ground. Hey, she's supposed to be nonviolent now. I'm having a real big problem with that right now.